Good. I think already many people are here, so I would propose that we start. Welcome, everybody. Huder, you want to start? Yeah. Okay, we can start. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having the time and joining our webinar about automating um, your SAP data integration and uh, leveraging uh, your data for business insights. This webinar is offered in cooperation between um, Teobalt Software and um, Data Vault Builder. Before we start, uh, let's um, introduce ourselves. My name is Koda Elzain from Teobalt Software. I'm responsible for product management and pre-sales in the EMEA region. Uh, Peter, would you introduce please yourself? So my name is Peter Bellis. I'm working at Data Vault Builder as well in pre-sales. I'm helping our client and partners to become productive with the tool. And one of the topics we have are all the connectors. And I'm very happy that Theobald is having us here and that we can do the presentation together because that's a very fruitful cooperation that we have with them. Okay. Thank you so far. So before we start, before we start, let's um, take a look at the agenda. I would start with a short overview about Theobald software who we are, what we offer. And then I would talk about um, SAP data integration with our product Extract Universal. I would um, show you the architecture. I would talk about some features and um, show you a live demo. This will be the first part. In the second part, then Peter would um, do similar. He would um, introduce um, his company, Data Vault Builder, and then he would show us how he can um, create um, um, an, an automated data warehouse um, with SAP data. And at the end, we would have in Q&A session. So you are welcome to write your questions and we would answer that at the end and discuss that with you. That was so far about the agenda. Now let's start. I would um, give you some information about us, Theobald Software. The company has been founded in 2004. We are software vendor specialized in the development of SAP interfaces, SAP connectors. The company has more than 50 employees. Um, um, our headquarter is in Stuttgart, Germany, um, responsible, let's say, for the whole EMEA region. We have offices in Seattle, USA, responsible for the US market, for Australia and other regions. And then we have offices um, in Asia, in, in China, um, to be near to the, to the um, Asia and Chinese market. Um, as a company, sure, we have um, technology partnerships with many companies, mainly um, with SAP. We are certified SAP partner. Our SAP connectors are certified by SAP. And we have other partnerships with leading um, technology and PI uh, partners like um, Microsoft, Exasol, and many, many others. And sure, we have um, partnerships with other ISV vendors, like in this case, uh, for example, Data Vault. And we have uh, partnerships with many consulting companies who, in general, would implement the project, would support the customer. And in this case, we have um, um, common partners, um, Global Software and Data Vault, common partners who know our both products and who implement that project. Um, at customers, at different customers. Uh, we would have um, later some information about next webinars where we would talk about such cooperation. Yeah? Um, so please stay at the end that, um, so that you have the information. Um, we have, as a company, more than 3,500 SAP customers. So that includes customers from all industries from all the world and um, that includes um, big enterprises and I'm sure many, um, let's say medium businesses um, who have SAP, who are using SAP. Since we um, support SAP systems in all industries and all modules, so that's clear that, um, that 
um, when you have an SAP system and you are in any industry, you will, you will, you will be, you are supported. We can support you with that. That was so far here about the overview. Um, let me give you here some information why you should um, uh, work with us, why you should choose our products and services. One of the main features is um, that our products um, has a focus on, on fast um, development um, that, and fast implementation. That means when you use our product, it's just a matter of hours that you come to a result. You don't need days and uh, maybe weeks or months. Um, it's easy to use, it's easy to maintain. We help you with uh, the automation of, of the task. Um, you don't need to, um, to, to, you don't need uh, th such manual work, for example. We can integrate very good with different automation and, and, and for example, workflow, um, um, tools and platforms. Um, our um, tools are very flexible. They can bring, for example, your data into different environments, um, into different approaches. Either you are using maybe an ETL or an ELT approach, either you are running your tools on-prem or in the cloud and so far. So you have all the flexibility. Safety and security is um, a very important topic for us and for our customer especially when it comes to sensitive data. Sure, when we talk about SAP data, that's very, very sensitive. So safety and security is sure an, an important topic. And as I've told you at the beginning, we are a certified partner. Our product is certified so that um, you can feel good when, when you are working with us when you use um, our tools. Now let's come here to our portfolio. Here you see all the different SAP connectors, SAP pl platforms that we offer for the integration with SAP. We have the products on the left side. That's all about data extraction or let's say mass data extraction. We will talk here about them. And especially today, we will talk about the product extract universal. On the right side, you have the product for process integration. So there it comes to um, automation your SAP processes using um, platforms, um, cloud platform, for example, or cloud workflows um, and BPMs and so far. So that would be the, the, the focus. An example would be, for example, using SharePoint um, or SharePoint Online or maybe the Microsoft Power Platform or Nintex um, and so far. Today, as I've told you, we'd focus more on the left side, on the data extraction. Here we offer different products for different environments, for different scenarios. So for example, for customers who are working with Alteryx, we offer here an, uh, an embedded connector for the Alteryx platform. That's called Extract for Alteryx. For customers who are using the Microsoft stack and they are using um, um, their ETL tool, SSIS, so here again, we offer an, an embedded connector for um, um, the integration services, for the Microsoft integration services. And then we have here a universal platform for data extraction that's called Extract Universal. And this platform has the benefit that it can um, integrate and that connect to different uh, tens of, of platforms and environments. Um, let's see that um, in more details. So here we see the architecture of Extract Universal. So again, what is Extract Universal? Extract Universal is an SAP um, data integration platform. The focus is to extract mass data from the SAP systems and to bring it to different environments for BI, for analytics, um, data warehousing, data, uh, for building a data lake, um, and so far. Um, here at the bottom, you would see, you would have here the connectivity to your SAP system. Um, one main source is sure the SAP ERP system, the different versions that can be ERP on HANA or it can be S for HANA that can be hosted um, on-prem or in the cloud 
all the modules are supported or the specific versions for different industry, the ISUs, um, for example, are supported and so far. Ensure customer who are using the SAP business warehouse, BW, that is supported to, again, here, different versions, BW, BW on HANA, BW for HANA, on-prem in the cloud, all that is supported. So when it comes to the SAP system, all ERP, as for HANA, BW, and so far, are supported. Except new version as a platform, you would um, install it and run it on a Windows environment. It's um, really easy and fast to install and configure. Just take uh, minutes and then it's ready. You connect to your SAP systems, you create your connection to your SAP systems, and then you have different connectors there. As you see, you have in connector, to connect to SAP tables, you can connect to SAP function, you can connect to ERP queries, you can connect to ABAP reports. So since we connect to the SAP application server, yeah, then you have access to all the business logic that include ABAP reports. ABAP reports, you have thousands and tens of thousands of such ready reports, for example, that are delivered by SAP and that uh, uh, offer so many business logic. So you can reuse it. You don't have to implement that business logic, for example, again on the new um, um, data warehouse platform and so far. You just reuse the business logic in SAP. We can offer access to um, the SAP business content that can be extractors, that can be, for example, CDS use and so far we support, uh, especially here, the incremental load or the CDC load. That means you can get from the SAP systems only the changes, only the updated. You don't have to make always in the full load. Huh? And we, when we are talking here about mass data, about mass transactions, about millions of transactions and so far. So here it really makes sense to just get, for example, daily the changes. And when it comes to connect to your um, business warehouse, to your BW or BW for HANA, so here again, you have uh, different options. You can connect to cubes, um, you can connect to queries, to hierarchies, to open hubs, um, and actually to each object, to any object. Yeah, That's here important to know. You can connect to any SAP system, you can connect to any object on your SAP systems, either on the ERP as for HANA side or on the BW in BW side. You can extract data in full load, you can extract data in incremental load and update load. Okay, that is here some of the important features that are offered with extraction of results. So once we have defined the connection to the SAP systems, we have defined which extraction would, would you like, which data would like to extract, then we have to decide what is the destination of the data. Would I like to bring it into a database or a data warehouse, for example? That would be possible. Here you see some of the supported, so that can be in SQL Server, either on-prem or on, on, on um, the cloud. It can be in other, um, other database, uh, it can be in Excel, so it can be, um, for example, HANA, Snowflake, and so far, on-prem in the cloud, no problem. For customers who would like to build um, an, 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 a data lake in the cloud, um, no problem, that's supported too. Um, and that can be either in, 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 the, in Azure, using Azure Data Lake, it can be in, 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 in Amazon, AWS S3 storage, or it can be in, in Google, um, no problem that all is supported. And then for other scenario, especially for example, for um, search service BI tools like Power BI, Tableau, Click, uh, for ETL platforms like NIME and Alteryx and so far, we offer here different possibilities. We offer also the options here to provide that data um, and, and as, as web service, as a REST API, as a REST API that can be consumed by, by different um, consumers so far. Okay, so that was here so far about the, the architecture and the, the possibility that you have. Um, you can connect um, to, to different environments, to data warehouses and so far. I hope that's clear. And now what you would like to do is to just switch to a live demo and show you the product um, here directly. Okay.
for that, let me here start my exact universal designer. <clears throat> so when you start the designer, you have to connect to your exact universal server. Both must run on a Windows environment. In this case, I have server and designer running on my laptop, but in a production environment in general, you have you would run ex your exact universal server on a Windows server in your network. It can run in the cloud too, no problem. Um, here authentication is possible. Um, so that's, uh, you have here different options. And when you connect, then you have here um, a list of your defined objects. So when you start at the beginning, you, you have to define all of that. You would start with defining the source connection. That means you can define, you define the connection to your SAP application server. You can define here different connections as you see. It can be a connection to an ERP system. It can be in a connection to an S4HANA system. It can be in connection to BW, to BW4HANA and so far, all that is possible. Just click here on add and um, just set here the, the connection information to SAP, to your SAP system. Let me show you here and then a an, an connection that we have. So here I'm connected to our ECC system. For example, you have to define the instance number and the client. For authentication, we have different options. Uh, sure, you can use an SAP user and a password. That SAP user, sure, it, he needs the appropriate access rights on the SAP systems. But we offer other, we offer um, different um, options too. And here, let's check the connection. You see here, my connection is successful to the SAP uh, system with this user. That's fine. So that's all of the first part. The first part is to create your connection to the SAP system. The second part would be to define which data would you like to extract. At first, you have to select the SAP connection. So I would like you to connect, for example, to my ERP system. And here I have the, the different connection types or connectors. As I've told you, you can, for example, use here the table component to extract data from all possible data types. In SAP, you have um, technically or physically different table types that can be um, um, a cluster table, that can be the pool table and so far. That's all is supported and sure uh, SAP views are supported too. Um, in general, in SAP, you have thousands of uh, standard tables that are delivered, that is supported, no problem. Uh, some tables are customized where customer add some uh, columns, for example, or uh, in some systems you have custom tables. So customer create their own tables, no problem, all of that is supported. So today I will show you here um, a demo with that. First, um, as you can see here, you have other more options. You can extract from ERP query, you can use the ODP framework, the ODP framework or ADP interface is the newest interface offered by SAP um, that um, support, uh, for example, delivering data incrementally in, in CDC mode that, um, and so far. So that's a very a new and you know, hot feature for connecting to SAP systems. Um, you can uh, extract data using uh, ABAP reports um, or BAPIs and function model. And sure, when it comes to BW system, you have here different connectors to for cube, for hierarchy, for open hubs, and so far. So I would just make it here easy and just use the table um, component for that. And uh, let me um, give it a name. Let's uh, call it demo um, sales doc. I would like to extract um, um, information about sales document from an SAP table. And now, as you see here, I, as I'm connected with the SAP system, I can search directly, directly on the SAP system. I can search using the SAP table name or an SAP description. In general, it makes more sense um, to search for an SAP table name. So that's a little bit technical. Um, in this case, for example, I can search here for this table that, is, uh, that offers information about the sales document. Um, the sales document items. I have other tables, as you see here, for example, when it comes to the sales document header data. Okay, so for my case here, let me select here this table and let's say click on okay. When I click on okay, so all the metadata of this table 
are here available. So I see here all the columns. I can search here for column names. I can select which column I would like to extract. I have here some information about the columns, for example, which are the key fields and so far. And I can have here um, a live preview of the data. As you see now, that's a live preview of the data. I can check, for example, the number of rows. So it has about 20,000 rows. Um, there are so many features here. I can add uh, additional tables. I would like to join data from different tables. That's possible. Um, I can define a filter, a filter, for example, if we'd like to, um, um, to extract data with a filter. For example, I have here uh, something like um, material um, class. So material class, that would be here, uh, material group. So I can, for example, make a filter on that. Yeah, and you see, I have different value here. Um, let me show you that. So I can here in the edit mode, let's say add criteria default with literal and here the, the field, let's select this one here. I would like to filter on the material group and I would like here to set a value. The value as a string in this case and let's take for example, 001. Okay. And now if I make again live preview, so you see the data is filtered on the SAP side. Yeah? So I extract in this case only the data that I need. If I check the count rows, okay, you see now I have just about 4,000 rows. Okay, that would be here a fixed filter, but I can use a dynamic filter. Dynamic filter can be changed um, when I call the extraction. Yeah? So I cannot show all that today in the webinar. So I would skip that for now. And now let's click here on okay. Okay, and um, okay, so now let's see how huh? that is here the extraction that I have created. I have used the table component, I'm connected to this SAP system, and now that is here the default destination that is used. Yeah? When I click here on run, um, as you see here, we have here different options. You I would or I can run it here now um, in the browser um, in the designer directly, but I have an options. I have your REST service that I can call it, or I have a command line tool. Um, we have here, as you see, a web service to run the extraction, but we offer further web services, for example, to check the log, to check the status, to get the metadata of that. Yeah? And that will be used later by Data Vault, for example, to get the metadata about the extraction. Here, uh, we have this command line tool to run the extraction, but we offer also other um, command line tools to automate the extraction, to, to automate the creation of such extraction. I would show you that um, in the next minute. Okay, so that's so far. So I can um, I can um, I can run it here, or I can run it directly in the browser, as you, if you like. So you just run it in the browser, and now I have I would get here um, my data directly in the browser. Okay, so that's a little big, that's fine. Um, but if I would like, I can click here on destination. And that is the next step to define the destination of the data. Yeah, what I would like to have my, my data. And I just click here on plus, and here you see the list of supported um, destinations. So that's what uh, I have talked about at the beginning. It can be database, it can be data lake, it can be in BI tool, it can be an ETL tool and so many options. It can be just uh, provide the data as a web service. That's all is possible. In my case here, I have prepared a connection to a SQL server, for example, SQL server local. And um, in this case here, I have default settings. That means the um, a table will be created. I have your different options. By default, it will be dropped and created and the data would be inserted and I have your different options for that. That's fine. Let me now click on okay. And now I would like here again to run the extraction. As I've told you again here, I would run it here manually, but we have here different options to trigger that by a web service or to trigger it with a um, command line tool. Okay, you see here that's successful. That's the number of rows. I have here a log. I can here again check the log for that. This log again is available per web service and so far. 
now if I go to my um, SQL server, I would find that uh, table with this name here, demo sales doc. So let's check here. Okay, let's see demo sales doc. Okay, so that is the table that exists there. And now we can um, show you here the data and the content. Okay, that's good so far. And if I take here the name of that extraction, uh, let me show you just a web server, for example, that delivers the, the, the metadata of, of, um, of this extraction. If I go here, I have prepared that. So, okay, so that is here with the URL to get the metadata and what I have to do is just here to write the name of my extraction and, and now I get here the, the metadata and that would be here an example. I have here the color name, the description, the data type and further, um, further data. Okay, now the last step before I um, give you Peter is just to show how to create an, 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 an automated clean extraction. So I have here um, prepared that, let me delete that. As I've told you again, we offer a command line tool. The command line tool is very easy. You just hear uh, that is the name. You would say, I would like to create an extraction. You give the name of the um, connection to your SAP system. You name the destination and here the type. I would create a table and you give the table name. So that's all. And if I go now here and let me run that again. Okay, so you see, I have created two extractions. That is the first one with the VBAP and the other one with the um, Okay, that is the first one and that is the second one. So the extraction has been created automatically. And now if I go here and just click on refresh. Okay, so you see that the tables extractions have been created and you can automate that and create it for tens and hundreds of um, extractions. Okay, that was so far from my part. Sorry, Peter, uh, I know I have uh, took three minutes more than planned, but no, the stage is yours. Everything's fine. So thank you a lot. And maybe first point is why we are using Teobalt to extract SAP data and why we are not connecting directly to, to some Oracle database or some HANA database below it. It's really, it's a certified connector, as Coder was saying. So they keep it stable over the versions. They give you access to the different methods. They give you access to, to the business warehouse and everything. So I think it's really, really crucial to understand that having a, Certified interface is very, very important in the long run when you want to keep everything operational, keep everything at low cost, that, that it works out. So let me share my screen. And before I go into my presentation, that, that we really see the last part of the extraction that Coder has created is we are connecting directly to this kind of REST interfaces that Theobald is offering us. So I can go in here and really look for the two tables that he has created. It will read the metadata and it doesn't read just the column names. It reads the metadata that Theobald is extracting for us. It gives us the table at uh, the column types so we can really connect to everything, take this over. And from here, Data Vault Builder will now in the first step create the staging table. It will create the corresponding loads into the database and load the data. And I just create two interfaces and then I go into the slides to explain you what we're doing here. And in the background, it will run, it will load the data because we are in two different locations. Still, it works. We have an internet connection between our locations and everything will happen automatically in the background. But so we don't need to then wait for the data to be loaded when we come to this place. Good. And that's it. So we have read now the metadata from Theobald. We have created all the staging objects. Now I go into my presentation and later I come back and we see what everything was created for us. So what is the point about the Data Vault Builder? Data Vault Builder is about creating 
integrated data sets because one part of data quality is that we have data in a good quality that it's historized we can see what the changes were and integrated between different data sources delivered on time that you can change it and extend it very fast so there are many many aspects to data quality which includes to bring all the data sources together one of them is sap that is brought through teobald but you can combine this with any other data sources like different databases, CSV files, JSON files, REST APIs, wherever the data is coming from, we can bring it together in one integrated data source. And how does the data vault builder work? It starts with a business model. We go in and we start modeling. We have something called the core business concept, which describes either an object you use in your business or a process. We have relations, which express how these objects are connected. And we have so-called subject areas or data domains grouping stuff together. The last bit that we have are the attributes or columns that are historized and stored the so-called satellites. And this is basically a conceptual and logical data model that we start with. And it's at the level where you can talk to business users, where they understand what the data is about. This is for us the most important point because only then we can include them very early on in the process we can get their business knowledge. We can verify what they want to know. And at the end, they understand what they are getting out. And it's a completely different approach than when you use some ETL tools or some technical tools where you start at the technical level and you start to extract your business meaning at the end. But here we start probably with the business meaning. The good thing is that SAP is already providing some of the business meaning as well within their metadata. And Theobald helps us to extract that. And we will see how we can use that to get a head start to start modeling as well in our tool. If you want to read how we compare to other tools in the data management domain, then you can read the BARC report. We are happy to, to send it to you and it will show you that you could use for the same thing we are doing as well as SIS. You could use Informatica or Oracle tools, but our clients are very, very happy about how we do that, how it works for them, and they are recommending the tool as well. And that's related as well to support policy. And this is all related to that we have a very standardized solution on the technical level. It's completely free that you can do whatever you like in your business model because your business is different than others. But on a technical level, we're automating stuff. We're making it real time. We're implementing everything in a way that it's documented, that you have data lineage for GDPR and everything that you need. So what makes our solution different? The first thing is what I already mentioned, we start always with a business model and in real time, we translate it into a working technical implementation. And we will see that because in the background, it's already everything created, the target tables for the data that we are staging, the flows are created as well, the objects to store it in our core, to create the history is created completely automatic. So it will be a very boring part in the next step when we go in and everything is already there, but that's what we are offering. And we're offering the full process to creating your data warehouse. This means it starts at the infrastructure. We're delivering you it in a way that you can just start it up on premises or in the cloud that you can model automatically. We're transferring this into working technical implementation. We have all the APIs that you can automate your testing, that you can deploy your data models between different environments or so between development, test, and production. We have REST APIs to do that automatically. So if you want to go in direction CICD, if you want to use a Git flow based process to version your code, everything is already in there. And there is as well a scheduler running your jobs, but you can use external schedulers. So it's a complete suite to create and run your stuff over the years because we're delivering you always the updates as well in two years, three years, five years. Examples, we are supporting uh, Exasol as a database. And when they upgraded from version six to version seven, we delivered as well new patterns for the new database to really use it well. And together with the upgrade of the Exasol database, the solution was that for existing clients, everything was running nearly four times faster than before just by using this combination, upgrading and not changing manually anything on their technical implementation. One example on how this is used, we have as an example, Deutsche Bahn that is integrating data for marketing. So if they want to know if they spend one more dollar or euro on marketing, what are the benefits? And they started with two or three data sources and then 
we're constantly adding more and more data sources to get a better and better picture. And by creating an integrated model, now they can't only answer, that they cannot only answer uh, the one original question, but 119 other questions, it's the basis for delivering stuff for reporting, for AI, and everything they do in this data domain. Why are we doing that? It saves you time, but at the same time, it reduces risks, it reduces cost, and it makes you really agile. It makes delivery of your stuff happen. So how do we integrate with Extract Universal and why does it make it special? The first thing is what I already showed in this very, very short presentation part is that the metadata that Theobald is extracting is reused by the data vault builder. So you don't need to do it the second time. You don't need to define your extracts here. If you define it already in Theobald, we are taking one-to-one -one the data that you created and use it. What's the next step is that we make out of it a working flow from staging the data into your core warehouse, creating interfaces which very virtually can define for different recipients where the data is going. We can control the access through the database objects we're creating. So you have one working workflow that can be triggered in the data vault builder. And Coder has showed there are different options. Uh, one is, and this is what I will show in the live demonstration is that we are accessing the REST APIs. So the process is driven by Data Vault Builder. We decide when we pull the data, when we load it into our core warehouse and where we progress. There is a second option and it can be depending on technology, on your general architecture. That's the better one for you is that Theobald can push the data to the database. If it's happening, that's fine as well. And we will see it on the next slide. We can pick it up from there. And what is the result? The result is that we can in very short time replicate bigger parts of the SAP data model into the data vault builder and based on the metadata from SAP automatically already create a first version of what you want to see. Is it perfect? No, your business might be a little bit different. You might have customized stuff. You see maybe business-wise stuff differently than SAP in its table stores it, but it gives you a head start. So this is only based on three base tables like Mara and two other tables that we can extract all the related elements and we propose them to you on what this can look like and what the element is. If I zoom a little bit in, so you see already different stuff that we have stuff like we have the VBAP table, VBAP table that the coder extracted, but from there, all the relations, and there are many, we can extract it. We will not use all of them. So you need to instill to manually decide on what is relevant for you and what is not and what you are not using. But at least you see it already in descriptive terms, in the original database terms. If you have some developers more knowledgeable about the uh, short abbreviation codes and table names, and this can, can give you the head start. Good. So how does it work layer-wise? The first thing is that we usually start with a business model that can be manually created or it can be already extracted through the Theobald connector from SAP because we can start with certain objects that you have in your model, extract all the relation and definitions and start creating a model. The second part where we use Theobald is for extracting the data itself. So we pull it through the REST API here into our staging area. Or as mentioned, it could be that Theobald is pushing the data into your database and we are picking it up there from a yield, uh, with a ELT technology. So it's your choice, it's your architecture, and there are different reasons to do the one thing or the other, but we support both from both sides, so that's pretty well done. Next thing is then that we need to map the data staged into the data model as well. There we take through Theobald the metadata from SAP, can define automatically the keys if they are already in the metadata, create the loads, create the relations and everything. So what we will see is after we have just triggered here the extraction that already a part of our model was created, the definition of the keys were created, the loads were created, and we can go directly into the next step and create our interfaces and define what we want to output. We are an ELT tool mainly, so we're working on top of databases. One of them is Exasol, a very good product if you want to have an on-prem database, but they are now offering as well cloud-based databases. We are supporting Snowflake, 
Postgres, Oracle, Synapse, and SQL Server in all its variant on-prem and in the cloud. So this means that your data will be integrated in one of these databases, and this will be then as well the access layer for your data to pull it out. What we will not see in the demo is that we're covering as well the infrastructure automation part, the testing part, deployment part. So there is everything in. And if you would create manually a solution with this SIP data that you would maybe extract just with Theobald, then you need to take care of all of this processes. So this that's the added value that we give to Theobald. Theobald is giving the added value of having a standardized interface, which is very config configurable. So this is what we're offering. In one second, there is a question. Yes, there will be a recording available for all the people that participated, so don't worry. And let's jump into the live, back into the live demo. So in the meantime, the data was staged and I have triggered as well, in fact, the second process, which is automating not only the extraction manually as I was doing it, but reading really from the source what is there and create a model based on that. So it did read what is the module where, where the data is coming from? What are the tables? And in our core part, where we're creating the data model, it recognized that VBAP is a sales document scheduled line data and VBAP is a sales document item data, that there is a relation in between them. And if we click on the single items, we will see as well how the keys are defined of these different elements. So we have the mandant on German, which is the client, uh, the Beleg number and the position number, which combined are the key of this table. If we go into VBAP, we will see that's an ordered grain. So that's why it created two different elements because here we have one more key part, which is defining in fact, something like the charge that, that will be sent out or planning charge to it. If we look at the relation, it automatically recognizes well how the different keys relate to each other. If you look at the so-called satellites, they will store the data or the attributes for these elements. There, again, you will recognize what Koda showed in his part, the metadata about the columns. So we don't have only the technical names in here, but we have as well the translation into the description. So you have both options to see exactly what is there. So you have to track here and the lineage to your source where the data is coming from, but at the same time, you have a little bit more speaking explanation of what the data means. And this is not just like a model and a definition, it's a working production ready implementation. So we can click on any element and start the loads and it will now load the data from the staging area into this element. And hopefully a few seconds later, should be loaded so we can have a look in it. We will see how it combined the keys, how the result is effectively. So we have the mandant 800 or the tenant 800, sometimes referred to as well as client. And we can look at the, the satellite attributes as well. So it will now load the data. It will not just load the data as it is, but it will create a history. So if the next day we load the data again, it will historize it and it will give you full-fledged accountability of all the changes that happened on this element. As well here, hopefully in a few seconds, data should be loaded. And we can have a look at it, what is in there. And there are a lot of columns. So probably if I just select all the columns, it's very small, but everything is there. So the next thing is when we have created a working implementation into our core data warehouse, how do we present that? And we recommend not ever give anybody access directly to your core model, otherwise you can't change it. But we can go to the next layer and create an interface. And here we define the grain of our interface. We define the initial data set. We define the time perspective. Do I output already only the latest information about a certain key, like a document or a sales item? Or do we want to output the full history with a valid from valid to perspective, as you know it often in reporting? So let's select just a simple perspective for a first thing. And now it will access our core model and say, okay, from VBAP, there is nothing linked because the grain of VBAP 
is finer, but if I create now an interface for VBAP, it will show me that I can link the data together because already in the model, I expressed how they relate to each other. And I don't need to look up the keys anymore. The tool is doing everything automatically. So I can create a very simple a report containing the information from both these tables. And it's now two tables, but it could be five or 10 different tables. And you can just by visually clicking on the element select, um, on the elements and select some amount of what do we select something like the committed quantity we could go in to the other element and from here maybe select like something like the material group And you see here again, you see the speaking name and the technical name, so we can store that. And after a few seconds, when everything is initiated, we see as well the result as it will be visible now, the reporting tool. Why are we using Data Vault Builder here? It's because we can't just use uh, data from SAP, but we could as well here take some data coming from other sources, like I have a, a Microsoft SQL Server database where we stored some additional information from other sources. Here it's a manual source. So I can add here a relation from my SAP data to my business area, define how the relation type is, define the load, and it will recognize what the key is on one side, what it is on the other side. And that simple, we can now create a relation between SAP data and other data. I hope you still hear me because... Yes, I hear you, Peter. Give me one second. No, it should be still okay. If you don't hear me, please tell me. Good, so let's load this information as well. Let's load this information from coming from other data source as well. And now it starts to become fun because now we can go through our existing interface, extend it with some other information. And in fact, this becomes the power that fro disregarding from where the data is coming from, we can integrate it in a very fast way just by knowing on a business level what we want to connect. And on the technical level, it implements everything. So after a few seconds, we have the output that we want. Good. So that's in fact the kind of modeling and integration that we do in the data vault builder. We could add business rules. We have data lineage coming in. So in the background, automatically, it did create us the relation between the staging systems, the uh, staging tables, our core loads, our interfaces, this data is available as well as metadata on the database level. It created as well in the background operations job. This means that this job that was automatically created can be just triggered with one click. And one click means that it can be triggered as well by REST API. It can be triggered by any enterprise scheduler, what you want, and it will run everything in the right order. Documentation was created in the background or we can create it because it's a new system that I used here. And it goes down, documents down to the level, including here, the metadata we have received from, from Theobald. And we could go into the next layer and deploy it directly. I can simulate this by comparing now my local environment against the empty environment, and it will tell me everything that I need to deploy. I know this was very fast. It gives you just a rough idea how it works. But the main thing is that we are creating a business model of your processes and connecting the data to it. We use all the metadata available from Theobald Connector and SAP to support you in this process and help you to become as agile as possible. So let's switch back 
our slides and open the round for questions and answers and see where the interests are. One question I see is about licensing. I can answer it for the data vault builder. In fact, if we want that you create a proper development process, this means that you just need to license your production server and the number of developers. And based on that, we can create an offer depending on the database you're using and the sizing of your database and the number of developers. Maybe Coder, you want to answer it for your part? Okay. Yeah. While Coder is getting his microphone to work, I will answer the second question. So how is if you need to join several tables how do we export it that, that there are different approaches as Koda showed you can already join different tables together in sap uh, in theobald if you do that then yes it's your unique object that we don't know but we could re, uh, read what the key tables are uh, key definitions are to create your hub and satellite out of it but it would be a little bit hidden what it is in this case <coughs> where we exposed one-to-one -one, the sap tables we can based on the naming find the proper metadata and create the relations and create the link so you have seen i haven't created any link i haven't created any key definition so that's really one-to-one -one coming from the source and the second thing is is about the cdc modes if uh, we have a cdc stream from sap uh, yes we can already work work with that but in the next version of the data vault builder being released this or next month it gets even better then it can use the inscription times from SAP and create bi-temporal satellites for you automatically. So it will be still full auditable, but taking as well the timeline from your SAP means that even if you are export daily, but you have changes within the day, it will keep track of, of both these perspectives and simplify the output of it as well. Okay. Okay. So Coder, it's probably just me that don't hear you. So I think yeah, you yeah. can speak. Okay. okay. So um, uh, about um, our product, how uh, it is licensed. So the license would be for the Windows Server installation. And uh, per default, um, you have up to 100 extractions. So what I have done in the, in the, in the, in the live demo, I have created the extractions. Um, to extract data from a table from SAP system, that is one extractions, and um, you have up to hundred extractions. No restrictions of the number of um, of rows, or number of columns, amount of data. That's all is free. No restrictions on the hardware. No restrictions on the number of users. That's um, um, that's all included. And uh, you need an, um, a license for each destination. So it can be in, in a data lake in Azure, it can be in, in, in a database. So that's what you need. So that's about the licensing. Uh, there's another questions for me as uh, the question is, we have S4 HANA Cloud running in SAP Rise Cloud. Is it supported? Yes. Uh, the answer is yes, that's supported. That means you have an, an SAP in the private cloud and uh, you have all the features uh, that's, that are required and, and there is no restriction so far from our side. So there we have a question for standard SAP tables. I just added like Mara probably. Do you have templated models in Data Vault Builder for inspiration and reuse? How it works is that you can, and I have now limited the automatic model creation because uh, if I would take VBAP and VBAP, it would already created like 50 or 60 different objects. So it would get a little bit confusing. So I reuse that. But if you select a table from the Theobald extract, we can create all the related objects automatically with all the business names, with all the keys. And usually what we do is that you don't deploy this directly into your live installation because out of this, maybe 50 objects, you will maybe use four or five. So we recommend to create a sandbox, select the tables you are interested in, look at what is related and deploy only the parts that are relevant for you into your integrated dev environment or wherever you're going as, as the next environment, but that you manually filter down because yes, there is a lot of relations that you never thought of. And I was sometimes impressed what what is in the background connected to single tables if you look at them. Good. So I think we answered most of the questions here. Mm -hmm. As I see it. 
So what are the next steps is we will have as well some other presentations together. One will be in German together with our partner Bitelligent, where we will focus more on the content, not on the technology, because today it was more about how to extract the data, how to show it technically, and it will be more about like one use case in supply chain, as an example, how to integrate the delivered goods and compare them to the promised goods, stuff like that, that we are more on a business-like level. So if you have any colleagues interested more in the business perspective, that would be right. It will be on the 13th of October. And as well, we have a physical, uh, or no, they changed it's it again. Webinar. It's, webinar. it's a webinar again. Yes, it was planned originally. I think still we will not end up in physical presence. Okay, so a webinar about one use case, how Melita used the SAP data presented by Areto to build their data vault model with data vault builders. So these are two webinars that you can join, which are more than about the content, but both will be in German. And please, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to, to contact Kodar or me on LinkedIn, register for Theobald demos directly on the webpage of Theobald, or you can on our webpage register for technical demonstrations of the data vault builder, where we go more in depth and show you how the tool is working, what the different options are, and can take everything even a step deeper. So last point is thank you, Kodar, for our joint webinar today. I hope for everybody that, that was here that you enjoyed it and that you learned a little bit and see you soon, hopefully. Thank you a lot. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.